the goal of this course really is to show you what I do in my consult in the consulting settings that I've run into. Okay, one more time. This is a preview of my course, Systematically Improving RAG Applications. It's like the week one introduction of slides. The target for this course is really any kind of engineering leader or product leader that is interested in learning more about how to implement a system to improve RAG application and generally air applications. But in this course, I want to be much more specific. I want to just first start off by thanking everyone for showing some interest and most importantly, trusting us. And my goals are really to give you a good product and give you guys a good experience. And so if there's any feedback from the course or anything you're interested in learning that is outside of the scope of this course, I'll be able to answer any kind of questions and jump on some group calls and really figure out what you guys need. And so the agenda for the introduction basically is just going to be an overview of who I am, who the audience is, what does success look like for this course, the playbook itself and a preview of that playbook, and I'll leave it up for some questions near the end. So who am I? I spent the past 10 years at companies like Meta and at Stitch Fix, along with a couple others, mostly doing machine learning, data science, and Rexus. When I was at Meta, I was mostly doing a lot of graph and content analysis to identify cybercrime. I have like a rag app for evil, and you can just you give that rag app to moderators to figure out what to do. Then the bulk of my career at, at Stitch Fix was focusing on two things. The first half was at a time where vision models really started to work. And what we did there was we said, okay, like vision works now. How can we use that to make money? And so I built a lot of the first vision models, the multimodal search models for product recommendations. And that work led to about, about a 50 million uh, incremental revenue per year. A part of that work also involved doing a lot of data curation. So I oversaw a budget about $400,000 to do our data curation, improve the data systems that we had in order to make better recommendations. And the second half of that career was actually figuring out how to build a robust recommendations framework and observability tool. Right? And this allowed us to recommend things like similar items, complementary items, outfits, and genetic collections. And all of this is a perfect mix of skills that we can now reapply in the world where instead of vision working, it's text working. Instead of product recommendations and multimodal search, it's doing multimodal search for a language model. So I think this is why, in terms of the experience that I do have, it's a perfect blend that fits into both how to instrument systems, think about RAG, and also think about how to invest your resources in something as ambitious as make the AI work for you. And then ultimately, this past year and a half, I've been doing a lot of strategic and comprehensive consulting to focus on solving questions and problems related to RAG, prompt engineering, and a bunch of other things. And as a result, I've worked with some pretty cool companies, and I would love to also be able to share some of the experience that I've had and really dig deep into some of the anecdotes that I think make up the most of what I think is going to be useful for people who take this course. And so the first question might be, okay, Jason, if you're so good at this, why don't you just build stuff rather than be a consultant? And unfortunately, the answer is I actually have a hand injury now, so that really prevents me from writing a lot of code. And that means I wouldn't be a good position to either start a company or join a company. And so I think now the high, highest leverage work I can do is advising and education. Now that I can't really code as much, I'm incentivized to actually figure out what I know. And so the focus of my career so far has been make vision work. And since 2022, it's pivoted to make text work and not much has changed. Visual search with embeddings, recommendation systems, improving product reliability, these are all the things that I built my career on, and now we're just applying those same skills again to RAG. So far, in terms of the signups and the people we've, we've accepted, it's a mix of about 36% of folks are co-founders and executives, and about 40% of them are software engineers, machine learning engineers, and data scientists. And lastly, what does success look like? Success looks like building a system to improve RAG, right? And like, why do we need a system? A system is a structured approach to problem solving that can guide how we think and think about problems. It's a framework for evaluating different technologies. It helps us understand how to make decisions better, diagnose the performance of these systems, and then have standard benchmarks to figure out what is actually improving and is it worth doing. And the reason we want a system is that systems provide consistency and repeatability. If you don't know what to do next, you can come back to the playbook and figure out what's the process, processes you need to put in place. And especially when something is as fast paced as this current wave of AI, having a system really lets you worry less about what to do next, and it frees up the mental energy to do experimentation and try to be creative. And my goal really is for the people who take this course to feel less anxiety when they're just being told like, hey, 
the AI is bad, can you make it better? And when you see people on Twitter say, oh, the solution is to look at your data, to figure out what that actually means, and being able to identify the high impact tasks, prioritize effectively and make good trade-offs, and ultimately choose the right metrics. And hopefully, as a result of these improvements, you're gonna have higher user satisfaction. You're gonna be able to generate more data and be able to get more feedback to just quickly improve the cycle. And I've done this really for a couple of different companies. I've worked with personal agent companies, companies that are doing like construction and question answering there. We've looked at places and processes like workflow automation and sales and marketing, transcript and data mining, and even some like due diligence use cases. And so I've seen a lot of these things. And one of my goals is to share all those stories either during the cohort classes or during office hours or even on Slack. The path to success really looks like focusing on experimentation rather than just the vague, make the AI better, please. Ideally, you know what to look for when you look for the, look at your data, why you're looking, what you're looking for, and what the signals are. And ideally, once you find these signals, the goal is to be able to actually figure out, is the juice worth the squeeze? And when the flywheel is in place, it's going to feel way more boring. And that's because a better application is a result, but it's actually not an effort. And your goal is to reduce things to just being consistent effort. If you want to be jacked, you want to be strong and build muscle, lose weight, gain weight, the thing you actually have to do is track your calories and track your workouts. And the goal is to reduce an ambitious goal, be stronger or live longer, to something as boring as you're tracking calories and working out. And the idea that I really want to push for the first half of this course really is the idea that a RAG application is going to look very much like a recommendation systems. You think people are building RAG applications where you do some kind of arbitrary retrieval, you shove it into a prompt, and you ask a language model to do generation. There's going to be an LLM in the front end, multiple retrieval backends, some filtering, some scoring, some ordering, and then you immediately put that back into a language model. And I think a lot of engineers focus on generation before even figuring out whether or not the retrieval is good. And I think only through improved search can you really improve the retrieval, which will ultimately improve generation. The issue is you really want to just change what you can see and the first is generation. And this is really informed by the classic four-stage recommendation system. There's retrieval, filtering, that's going to use a lot of a different kind of interaction data and ultimately better ordering which could contain additional business logic. So now let's jump into actually what the flywheel looks like. Once you have a basic RAG system set up, your first job is really going to be figuring out how to generate synthetic data. And once you have synthetic data, you can allow yourself to have very fast evaluations. And these fast evaluations are going to help you understand how to make these systems incrementally better. And I'll explain what these metrics look like and why they matter. Once you have that in place, you can deploy an application and collect real-world data. With that real-world data, you can go back to step two and improve the synthetic data that you generate. Once you have enough real-world data, then you can use classification techniques and data analysis techniques to really understand the categories of user questions. Then with these categories, we can make targeted improvements to the system in an offline fashion, and then move that classification into an online setting where then you can use those same classes to do monitoring and track system performance over time. This way, if you onboard new users or the data sets change or the types of questions change, we can detect that as they're happening rather than as people churn out of the platform and you're doing exit interviews. And ultimately doing this in a continuous fashion. Once you get your system in place, you go back to step two, you start building out more synthetic data, you do your evaluations, and this is the flywheel that happens on and on. And your only job is to basically analyze the data, make new hypotheses, and execute. Right? By doing that, you can address the cold start problem with synthetic data. You have now tools to instrument and observe the user data that you have to identify your strengths and weaknesses. And ultimately, the goal is going to be building new routers, new tools, and new capabilities, and just exploring and exploiting the distribution of tools that you have. And then you just repeat this over and over again. For the first two weeks of this course, we're going to go over the value and importance of generating synthetic data sets and why having synthetic data allows us to have fast evaluations that allow us to spin the flywheel very quickly. The second week, we're going to talk about the real world data collection, the classification, and how we think about improving the systems and how we think about production monitoring. Once that's out of the way, the rest of the four weeks is really going to be focused on the specific details that I use to improve the RAG applications I've worked on. We're going to talk about things like generating synthetic text chunks, which will allow us to think about different ways of processing document data and image data. 
We're going to understand query understanding and routing better and how do we measure that as well, along with how embeddings themselves are limited and why we might want to think about things like lexical search and even potentially fine-tuning embedding models if we have enough data from the real world. And then lastly, we'll talk about how we can wrap this all up in a way that allows us to build a compelling RAG product. I'll talk about some of the UX challenges that I've seen, some of the different ways that we can generate dynamic UI, but also how we want to collect feedback, implement streaming, and think about where RAG is going as a product. Ultimately, I don't think the, the right design is going to be a chatbot, but we'll talk about that when we get there. If you're interested in learning more about the course and signing up, you can apply today and the cohort starts, the cohort starts July 30th. There's about five days left to apply. What you get for that is six weeks of hour-long sessions with me, along with six hours of additional office hours and 10 guest speakers that are across the different industries that will tell you how they have improved their applications. And there's only about 30 slots left, and so make sure to apply so we can get all the reviews done before the end of the week, and then we'll see you in the course.